Good afternoon. We're back for the afternoon of day seven of the state versus Hannah Gutierrez Reed. This morning, we saw a few witnesses, including Joel Souza, who I think was the most impactful witness from the morning testimony. Joel testified about what the set was like, the fact that he had complimented Hannah's work, but had complimented everybody's work on some of their busier days on set. And then he talked about, of course, what happened when he and Helena Hutchins were shot inside the court, uh, shot inside the church on set of the movie of Rust. He talked about not being able to comprehend that this would ever be a live bullet. And he said he kept telling them at the hospital, it can't be a live round. You don't understand this is a movie set. This can't happen. This can't happen. And that really is in line with other testimony we've heard from Dave Halls and from Ross, who was the um, a camera dolly grip. We also had the cross-examination of Sarah Zachary, where they pointed out that she has an immunity deal with the prosecution, that the prosecution never mentioned on direct examination. And that immunity deal is for, if you give truthful testimony, we will not prosecute you. And it was Sarah Zachary's understanding that if her testimony was not truthful, she could be prosecuted. Lots came out on her cross-examination about what she was doing, including the fact that she had gotten into not a little argument with Hannah, but the Hannah had dropped the see you next Tuesday at her on the work set. And Sarah Zachary actually had wanted Hannah fired from the movie, but she tried to parse it and say she just wanted her fired from the props role. She wasn't saying anything about her armor role. And they talked about how many conversations Sarah Zachary had with people after this happened. She was talking to Alec Baldwin. He wanted to talk to her. She was talking to um, Seth Kinney. He wanted to talk to her. She had quite a lot of communication with people after this event. And that was interesting to see. I think the takeaway from the chat was that her testimony felt a little odd and like she was downplaying it. And then they dropped the statement in redirect that Sarah Zachary wanted to see Hannah Gutierrez go to jail for what happened here. That was the end of the morning. This afternoon, we are starting with witnesses. It is day seven. It is Friday. I thought at the beginning of today, the state was going to end their case. I, I don't think we're going to get there today. I really don't. My mind has changed seeing how the evidence plays out. I don't think we're going to get to the end of evidence today. So let's roll the intro. Let's get back to live court. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the Internet's go to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not Let's get into it. Chat, I see you. You're like, Emily, you forgot the cowboy. His testimony didn't have impact in the way it would need to be put into a summary of the morning testimony because it was re redundant. It was redundant testimony. I know we enjoyed it, but it was redundant testimony. I mean, I wanted to hear more about horse wrangling. Not really relevant for this. So um, we've got our first witness of the afternoon on the stand. Um, again, we're a little behind real time because they're going to sidebar and then we'll get caught back up. So I know if some of you are watching a few minutes ahead, thank you for no play by plays in the chat because it does get hard to keep up with what's happening in court. And I get distracted as one does. So let's, uh, let's roll to court. There's no audio. That's not helpful. Um, let's boost this back up and get back to it. So I was hoping we would hear, um, and we hear nothing. It seems that Hannah's still in the courtroom in her sunglasses. I mean, they're cute sunglasses, but maybe not in court. So they're just leaving this witness hanging on the stand while they do whatever. This is riv this is riveting. And now they've approached. All right. Well, you know, you're not going to miss anything in court because nothing is happening. Are they waiting for the jury to come in? It looks like it. Oh, no, they're still at sidebar. Oh, what? Did you see the prosecutor's face? Look at her. Look at the witness. And, like, she didn't wink. She smiled and, like, blinked at the witness like everything was all good. What were they talking about at sidebar? Sorry. All right. It sounds like the jury is back in. It was a, just like a... A really you swear firm under penalty wink. of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. 
I think uh, it was probably meant to be a, like a euro good gesture. Microphone. It's just the jury wasn't in the room. Um, I wonder if this witness is nervous. Ma'am, go ahead and state your full name for the record. My name is Sherilyn Schaefer. The prosecutor already sounds like she's trying to use her calming. Ms. Schaefer, term. how are you currently employed? I am employed in EMT in the film industry, a medic. Can you just explain to the jury the situation, the, the connection yeah, between movie sets and medics? Is a medic always on a movie set, and if so, why? Usually, if it's a union show, a medic is always on set. Um, and this was a union show, even though there were non-union hires. That happens. Um, but 99% of the time, we are in charge of making sure the actors, and not necessarily the actors, but the crew, um, have sunscreen, bug spray, Advil, electrolytes. Uh, if it's hot out, we make sure everyone stays hydrated. If it's cold, we hand out hot hands. Um, that's majority of it. If somebody gets a splinter or a cut, we take care taking. of those as well. Um, if somebody gets injured enough that they need to go to get stitches or be seen, we bandage them up, we send them off. Um, and then we are in charge of the, um, the paperwork that goes with the production to make sure that the uh, injury can be uh, to go through workers' comp so that it's not coming out of the, the crew or whoever's the production um, budget. insurance. Okay. Um, and the individual insurance. How long have you worked generally in the film industry? Um, I started in the film industry in 2008. Or, I'm sorry, 2009. Okay. And um, yeah, I how think this long witness is really nervous. As a medic in the film industry since 2014. And can you summarize for the jury what your uh, medical training consisted of that? allowed you to be qualified for this position <clears throat> i'm a licensed emt she's already upset all right why do we need this witness i, um, I don't know what she's going to add we we know that she for we know that the injuries approximately, happened do, since 2009 Unless if you can guesstimate for us approximately how many uh Films have you worked Unless on? Unless it's going to be the armor wasn't acting right. Uh, I film don't know. and TV. Sure. Um, Forty plus. Okay, and of those, can you guesstimate for us again approximately how many had real firearms and an armor on set? She's. You can hear that she's upset. Maybe ten, twelve. Um. Was the handling of firearms by the armor on the set of rust different than what you were used to? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what you noticed, how you thought it was different? I noticed uh, the armorer on rust did not um, secure the weapons as a normal armorer. Would, or an armorer on productions I've worked on before would. Normally, um, the weapon would be secured until it was time for the actor or stunt actor to need it. Um, and then the armorer would go to their, generally a locked cabinet, um, grab the weapon, um, take it to the actor or stunt actor. Uh, with the first AD, sometimes the stunt coordinator, depending on who's, who's there, open the weapon, empty it, um, if it needs to be emptied, show the actor uh, or stunt actor the the um, the type of, of bullet, I guess you would call it, that's going to be in the gun. Show it that it's not real. Um, I think they're trying then, to just or essentially check it in front to show. Of the actor and the first AD to make sure that everyone's uh, comfortable with it, uh, and then hand it over to that performer. Um, that Hannah was for the shot, for doing things shot they're outside they're of the normal. However, shooting. if you're going to do it this uh, just, way, I would have left the expert EMT, or not the expert EMT, the expert armor till the end because you, if you stack all these witnesses so you hear, I didn't see her unloaded, I didn't see her do this, I didn't see her do this, then 
then you have the expert at the end tie it all together but once you've had that expert all of this testimony feels pointless to me because it's like he already told us that he already told us that so now this feels redundant and kind of like piling on where if they had built this case with these witnesses first and then put the expert on it would feel more like oh and now he's telling us why all this matters um versus the other way around we've heard from him i'm like let's move on we've already we've already heard this is getting redundant to be clear what you just described was what you are accustomed to that is correct though sometimes witness uh, ordering is not ideal because people have schedules and lives jury, and travel uh, i get what, that uh, how how that procedure worked on the set of rest um a lot of times um when i would notice i would notice our armorer um, hand the guns over to the actors sometimes checking them sometimes not um, it, Generally, once the scene is over, you would remove the weapon. Um, the armorer would remove the weapon from the actor and resecure it until it is needed again. Uh, on Rust, that did not happen um, a good majority of the time. The actor still remained uh, in possession of the weapon, whether it was in their holster or in their hands. We know. And um, can you kind of explain to the jurors? how long the actors would be left with the weapons in their possession uh, after the scene and maybe discuss a little bit about how long it takes to do a turnaround. Okay, there were, um, there were a few times where, you know, it, they would have the, the weapon for this a, a minute or two or so off. after uh, we had cut. But then there'd be she other times the, where we I would be turning around and, and that's site. where the camera position changes. Like if we're looking at somebody, yeah, she already has turn a around, in her and we're going to look the other direction at the actor. Um, that can take, uh, depending on all the moving parts, 20, 30 minutes, um, where they would still be in possession of the weapon. And, and I just want to be clear, did you testify that you saw uh, Ms. Gutierrez provide actors with Joel weapons without conducting a safety check? That is correct. Joel was great. That's why this testimony, I talked over it. Hold on, we're going to back it up. That, which is the hard thing. You never know what this prosecutor, when the critical question is coming. I think that's why this witness was called. And I just want to be clear. Did you testify that you saw uh, Ms. Gutierrez provide actors with weapons without conducting a safety check? That is correct. Thank you. I have nothing further. This is Did multiple witnesses that have now testified to it. Do you ever have an occasion to notice uh, whether or not any of the actors on Claire, the set of lot. the movie quite did their own safety checks? There were some times that the, um, the actors would, would open their weapons and look, you know, see either while it was being reloaded or not. Um, Which actors? At, opening it up and looking at it. And generally on a film set, you would not do that without the armorer present in front of you. Um, and if you did, then the armorer would need to be called back to, che to recheck that weapon in front of you. Hold um, on, hold on. That's going to be very good for Baldwin's trial because what she just said is what Baldwin has been saying the entire time. Baldwin has said it's not on the actor to check the weapon, and if the actor does check the weapon, then the armorer has to recheck after the actor has manipulated it. And in this case, they were moving forward. I don't know why they're treating her as an expert on set, but they are. And what she testified to was if the actor checks it, then the armorer has to recheck it. Um, so that's where we're at with this. Very helpful to both. So when case. the actors would do their own safety checks, was Ms. Gutierrez... How does she know that as a fact? Um, I have no idea. Participating in that? Nobody's objected. Uh, sometimes she was near. She's sometimes on set a lot. She was, and I don't recall exactly all the time. Uh, I didn't notice a lot, but there were some times where she could have been close by or not, but she was not directly in front of the actor. Okay. Um, and it wasn't every actor. It was, you know, just a couple here and there. Okay. Um, Which did one? you ever take note of how Ms. Gutierrez would load ammunition yeah, the expert, into her the fanny expert said pack? That. Yes. The expert's saying it's also bad for Baldwin, or, or good for Baldwin, um, but it's 
it's people on set are also saying that they know that. I don't know why we're approaching, but it's a real good time for us to uh, zoom, zoomy, zoom, zoom. Do you recall the question? Nobody recalls the question. Uh, Ms. Schaefer, do you recall the question? Could you repeat it again, please? Did you ever take note of how Ms. Gutierrez would uh, transfer ammunition from uh, boxes to her fanny pack? Yes, <clears throat> there was one occasion that I did see that. Uh, can you describe what you saw for Thank the jury? Thank you, Jen. That's so sweet. So the the there would be um, Nishé, I will. the boxes that had the st a styrofoam with um, the ammunition you, inside Michael. of it. Um, and there were times I would see her take, or this one time, I saw her take the box and kind of tip it a little bit and use her fingers to put some in and then hand it back, I believe, to um, Ms. Zachary uh, and get another box and do the same thing, put more in, put it back, get another box, put more in, put it back. So we're mixing multiple rounds inside of different, and again, I don't know what they were, um, but mixing different rounds for different weapons. There were some... So this EMT is a percipient witness to this fact. She watched as Hannah and, and Sarah were pulling different type of ammo from different types of boxes and putting it, the fanny pack in the, the pockets or whatever. So she saw that. So she's testifying about what she saw on this set, which is completely appropriate testimony and why the prosecution's still asking her questions. Cause that is incredibly dangerous and shouldn't be happening. Short ones, some long ones. So during this um, instance where you saw uh, Ms. Gutierrez load the fanny pack directly from the boxes, if you recall, would she take the time to check every round to make sure that it was inert? No. All right. Um, Nobody saw Hannah shaking rounds. In your experience in the film industry, um, does the armor always stay with the firearm? Yes. Or within proximity, be able to visually see. You mean when the actor has the, the weapon? Correct. Yeah, to be able to visually see. Um, was that the case on the set of Rust? No. Not always. Not always. Um, I'm going to shift gears and direct your attention to October 21st of 2021. During the, uh, if you during can the, just kind of walk. Okay. I don't know why we're shifting gears. Rod's in the chat said, did anyone speak up specifically about Hannah's irresponsible behavior? It seems like everyone knew beforehand how reckless before the shooting. Yes before she got hired, I don't know. But yes, some people did mention it um, after the misfires particularly. Walk us through, walk the jury through um, how that day went and what you recall. You can start before the lunch hour. Objection we'll calls for narrative. Through, okay? okay. This witness is um, about six, six clearly very was my nervous. Call time that morning and that's what time I, uh, that I needed to be on set. Which was why the prosecution's um, questioning style is a little different. I arrived on set. Um, I, well, I arrived to base camp first, grabbed breakfast. I, I don't remember if we had a COVID test that day or not, but then I went up to set. Um, and I have um, I have a trauma bag that I take with me and I have a, a box and a stand that has, inside the box will have the, the um, emergency, it will have tissue, it'll have cough drops, it'll have those sorts of things that a crew member might want, as well as containers of um, sunscreen and, and bug spray because at that time we had sun and bugs um, so I went and I set my stuff down at the middle of the town and um, on the radio there was a little bit of noise about the camera department being behind schedule yeah um, that's an understatement asked <laughs> the somebody the camera uh, department has sure quit one of our um, either our, one of our other ADs or one of our PAs on set of production assistants on set I had asked what was going on and they had said that the camera department uh, was not ready to go um, and wouldn't be ready to go on time. Um, but didn't I tell why. Interesting. I'm friends with the majority of everybody on set. I've worked with everybody a lot. And so I went over to where the camera truck was to kind of see if I could see what was going on or talk to anybody about what was going on because I knew that they had had some issues with the production. 
And what um, issues? I noticed that they were packing up all their equipment. Um, and um, I, don't know, know so what I watched them do have. that for a little while, but then I had it's to go hearsay, back to setting everything else up that I had to set up. And uh, at some point in time, um, our first AD, uh, Dave Halls, had called a, um, for a safety meeting that morning, um, which was rare. Um, which was rare. And it was more of a meeting to kind of get the crew back together again, because we were all kind of spread out and, and try to figure out what was going on that morning. And um, of course, everybody wanted to know the T of why the camera so he, crew walked he, off set. Um, I would, you know, in the safety meeting, he just said that we were going to have a narrative. Um, I, I'm assuming. Okay, sorry. I can say what it is. It's a narrative. She's objecting to narrative. She's objecting to this witness is just going on and on with no question pending. The court is ask a question get an answer ask a question uh, get Ms. an answer Schaefer, without saying what anyone said can you summarize for the jury the what safety your meeting was oh it's also the hearsay purpose for that meeting i didn't think it was being offered the for the truth of that meeting was to um i thought it was being offered for her day. as we were scattered um to try to get the the day started we were already so far behind with the camera crew leaving and um when when scenes are being filmed on the set, are you present every time a scene is being filmed? 95% of the time, okay. unless I need to use the restroom or, or something. Okay. As people um, do. Uh, were scenes being filmed that morning Did you have to fight Hannah lunch? for the bathroom, yes. though? And were you present for those? That was yes. Uh Do you recall uh, if any of those scenes uh, involved the use of firearms? I'm not sure about the first scene. I, I don't remember what we shot. The second part was before lunch, right after we moved up to the church. We had a scene. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that it used weapons. Some of you have asked in the chat, does the EMT have a lawyer? Um, yes, the EMT has a lawyer because this EMT is also suing production. So, so this EMT also has a civil lawsuit. I think the DA should bring it up. Um, and not let her get ambushed with it, like, or crossed on it, like Ross did. But she also has a civil lawsuit. Um, I've mentioned it a few times, but I haven't covered it super in depth since she filed it, which was sometime in early 2022. I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, did you, during that scene, did you see any of the uh, handoff of the weapon from the armor to the actor? I did not. Okay. Um, and then at some point, do you go to lunch? Chris, I agree. Yes. Um, and when lunch is over, tell us what happens. After lunch, um, um, I had gotten a ride up to set from our base camp, which was just a few minutes away uh, down the road. And um, I had walked from where they drop us off up to where the church is, and um, they're not doing a class action. Was waiting for the rest of the crew and things. the rest of the departments to get to set as well, uh, and so I sat down on the the end of a tailgate that was nearby. I believe it was electric truck, but I'm not positive. Okay. Joel is Tell not being sued. He's that. not part of the production team. He's the the director, but he's not a producer. Sorry. She does not want it's to okay, retell this. Time. We'll find I out. I was if talking to this whoever was sitting intimated. next to me. Uh, maybe a locations person. I don't I'd be remember. Surprised. And the sound of a gun went off, um, or I heard the sound of a gun. And I looked over at who was sitting next to me, and I said, uh, "Are we rehearsing?" Because I didn't know that we were back in at that point. I hadn't heard anything on the radio about us being back in and uh, from lunch. And I said, I didn't hear anybody call, you know, fire in the hole, or, or normally, like you would hear, the armorer would say um, quarter load, half load, full load, whatever type of ammunition that they are shooting. Uh, and none of that was said. So as soon as I said that, I grabbed the, the bag, and my bag, my normal bag, and I ran into towards the church. I wasn't very far from it. And at that, as I was approaching the door, I heard um, medic emergency come over the radio. And, and are you the only medic on set? I am. Okay. So when you heard medic emergency on the radio, did that information tell you where to go? No. Um, 
How did I you did know that. where to go? Because I heard I was the, there. I was sitting. I was sitting there, uh, outside the church waiting. Okay, understood. Please proceed. She's like, because I was um, on set. So and I got I heard to the door, shot. and um, one of the things that we are taught in, in, in when you're becoming an EMT is your scene needs to be safe before you uh, yes. go into it. So I I stood at the door and I looked around to see what was happening, and I asked what happened, and somebody said. Um, <clears throat> Helena was shot, or the gun went off, some, something to that effect. And I looked down at Helena, who had been sitting at that point um, to my right, and, and Joel was on the left um, um, in, in obvious pain. Uh, and, and Alec Baldwin was at the back of the church from me, the opposite end of the church from me. So moved um, away from the first pew all the way back. And then um, I looked down at Helena again, and as I started going towards her, I, I believe it was... Um, our camera operator, Reed, had asked uh, her if she could feel her legs. And uh, for one, I believe she said yes. For the other one, um, she said no. And so I knew that there was some sort of spinal injury at that point. And um, as I was going towards her, I could see the blood um, dropping, dripping from, the, from her back onto the church floor. Um, was she still seated at this point, or was she? She said that. She was leaning uh, kind of on a pew. OK. Um, and um, in my regular, my smaller bag, I carry I carry trauma shears, and um, and so I started cutting up the back of her jacket uh, to try to find where she was bleeding from. And um, at some point in time, uh, I believe it was Ann Shim, our second second AD, asked me if there's anything that I needed or she could do for me, and I. Or, or it's, before that, I'm sorry, I had I called out on the radio for somebody to call 911, we would need an ambulance. And Ann then asked me um, if I needed anything and I asked her to get me my, my bigger trauma bag because that's where I keep my trauma related um, items. And she did and I asked her to also call Matt Hemmer, um, who was one of our electricians. I asked him her to call him because he had some previous um, military experience medically and, and he was one of the people I knew I could get up there to help me being the only and medic did. and two patients is not easy and so I had him just take over um, for Joel while I I tended to Helena and so if you can kind of explain to us um, what kind of treatment you attempted I'm just gonna note because chat I see you guys chatting about it and to give everybody a second to take a breath um, she has been a on-site movie medic for quite a while. A lot of their jobs entail just if somebody gets injured, um, getting them off to paramedics. So this is not within the purview of her normal workday. And as an EMT, might have been something she never encountered if she went right into to movie work. Gunshot wounds are not something that you would always encounter depending on your jurisdiction. And sometimes those go to paramedic first. And so this is going to be very difficult for her because this is very much outside of her norm um uh with regard to miss hutchins when i cut up um the front of her or the back of her jacket i'm sorry um i grabbed some gauze and i put it on the the one J. hole Michael, that i could find base, at that point basic emt not and paramedic. i asked um at that point i believe it was reed was next to me i gave him a glove and i asked him to hold that gauze there and, um, and, and sometime in the meantime, we had moved the pews, or the guys had moved the pews away and laid her down. Um, and I went to the front of her to cut up the front of her shirt, uh, to the chest area to try to find um, the other hole. Knowing that um, Joel had been shot, it, I knew that it was a through and through, or in one side out the other. You already suspected that it was a through and through? Yes, because okay. Joel was, Joel, because of the way that Joel was um, screaming in pain. And she he only heard one likely. bang. Um, she whatever heard one had bang. gone through her had gone into him as well. Yeah, because okay. she only Please heard one proceed. bang. Um, so I cut up the front and I could not find an entrance wound and so I had to um, it was under keep her looking arm. until I found the or the other wound. I didn't know what was entrance and what was exit at that point. Um, and when I did I found, I grabbed another um, gauze that I have and I put it there um, to apply pressure. Um, and I'm not sure at what point I think I asked Serge or somebody who was um, somebody else who was nearby to to hold that and apply pressure while I went and grabbed oxygen. Okay, and so 
Uh, give us just a little bit of information about your oxygen apparatus and what you did with that. Um, it's in my main bag, so I grabbed it. I grabbed my main bag and pulled it over, and um, it's a non-rebreather, so it's uh, it's the mask that goes over the face and it has a bag at the bottom that inflates, and so you can the oxygen is delivered that way um, through the mask. Um, it's got the things go around the back of the head to hold the mask on. Okay, and, and just to be clear, we heard some uh, testimony earlier in the trial about Ms. Hutchins being intubated. She's going to clarify it. I'm process? glad you're clarifying it. Okay. And, um, and a basic EMT wouldn't proceed. be intubating. Um, so I put oxygen on her Paramedics and I called would. back to the ambulance I, um, or to the, on the radio, I'm sorry. I called okay. back on the radio um, to make sure to have somebody call back or whoever was communicating with 911 that we would need two ambulances and a bird at that point because I knew Joel would need an ambulance and she was going to need a helicopter. You already knew she was gonna need a helicopter. With that kind of um, trauma, yes. Her level we of are, EMT are, is uh, like... 15, 18 minutes from first aid the plus hospital, plus. From, from town. Um, and Not with the way paramedic. that she was bleeding, I knew she wasn't gonna, she was gonna need more than she, than we could provide her, or an ambulance could provide, or Santa Fe hospitals could provide. She needed to go to She's the like, She needs to get out now. Okay. and. Do you have any knowledge about the condition that a patient has to be in in order for the helicopter to take off? I don't know they if need she to would be know stabilized. That. And I do you have does. do you, do you know why that is given your medical training? Uh I do not. Okay, fair enough. She's not a paramedic. Um, she's not doing life flight. Like no, she doesn't know. She's like I know they need to be stable. After you called for two ambulances and a helicopter, what did you do at that point in time? I just continued. Um, uh, Helena was fighting. Um, she didn't want the oxygen on her face. She didn't want um, anybody holding anything on her. She, she was fighting. Um, Sabrina in the chat asks, is this witness being sued? No. The surge was is, there too. This witness is suing production. Um, were you, at, after, uh, we understand that you were uh, providing oxygen and that Ms. Hutchins was struggling with that. Um, was there anything else that happened other than that before uh, paramedics arrived and took over that you can recall? Let her be done. Um, there was a point in time when, um, when I when I first had walked in, uh, um, there were still people inside, and so I had I had said to whoever was there, AD wise, um, to to remove anybody that was in the church that didn't need to be there. If they weren't some of the yeah. people that I had asked to help, then they needed to be removed. Alec being one of them, he was it, still in the church. Like, uh, get the fuck out. Shortly after I got in there. Sorry, I'm I'm bouncing backwards a little. No, bit. no, it's okay. Um, it, so you asked an assistant director to do that for you? I believe, either assistant director or PA, somebody. And, and a PA is a production assistant? Production assistant, which is um, when you're first trying to get in the union as a, um, in, in, in their union as, a, as an AD, you have to become a PA first and you have to have so many days of PA work okay. um, that you submit to the union before you can start as the next, I believe it's the second second is the. Okay, all right, understood. Uh, so whoever it was that you spoke to and, and you asked them to uh, remove Mr. Baldwin and any other unnecessary people, did, did that person do that for you? Yes. Yeah, okay. if you're not helping, get out. Um, and, and at some point, did paramedics arrive? Yes. Um, do you have any, any idea how long it took them to get there? It felt like forever. Um, I believe yeah, though I it was, I, I don't have an exact time. Um, I believe 12, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, That's just, they're so far out. And I do believe they're that so there far was out from a, the city. Uh, before the ambulance arrived, there there might have been somebody else, a police, police officer, maybe that was around. But ambulance wise, it was quite some time. Okay. And do you recall a police officer coming in with a medical bag and handing items to you? I do. Vaguely, but I do. Okay. Um, 
in we your saw medical that officer, training, I think that officer was the first are you witness. aware of, of um, the procedure that's done when a person is intubated, even though you didn't participate in that in this case? Yes. And are you aware that sometimes... I think they're, I don't know what you're objecting to because the prosecutor's lost me on what she's talking about, to be honest. All right, let's zoom, zoom through this sidebar. Get us caught up a little bit more with real time. Okay, Ms. Schaefer, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna finish that question. Uh, thank you very much, I'll pass the witness. This cross shouldn't come in hot, but I've been surprised sometimes because she did talk about um, she did talk about Hannah not checking the rounds and stuff like that. So I'm going to start with this incident you talked about on You're direct. You're armor, uh, like right? The, the ammunition mm -hmm. and uh, you don't know putting it into her fanny pack. Okay. Okay. Um, so first, uh, you don't know the difference between blanks and dummies, right? I do not, not, not visually. Right. And um, did is what you saw in that one instance, Sarah Zachary bringing Hannah Gutierrez the different boxes of ammunition? She was next to Hannah. I'm I'm not sure exactly where the boxes were staged. Right. But, but you saw Sarah because bring the lawyers her acted like children. That's why they have um, to approach on every Mr. sidebar. Yedis take um, the rounds and put them in her fanny pack, right? Correct. Okay. And you don't know if Sarah had shaken those box before she brought or those rounds before she bought them, brought them, right? I do not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Counsel, Can metal product I know you're trying. Counsel, I, I appreciate you doing your job. Counsel, you, you actually do your, your job well. Um, I appreciate your cross-examination, however. I disagree. Hannah shaking the rounds before she ever brought them onto set or whatever is totally irrelevant for the fact that she needed to do it before she put them in the gun. She needed to do them before she put them in the gun. Guns that can't fire, um, so. that can't fire re like replicas, like gun replicas, would those require safety checks? So they have to approach for every objection because the lawyers were doing speaking objections with completely inappropriate statements in front of the jury and it kept happening. So now they all have to do it up at the bench, which is fine, um, but it would be nice if it would be objection hearsay ruling or objection hearsay approach, but it's not. And you've given us testimony. Schaefer, you said you worked on several um, film sets before, right? Yes, ma'am. And you've given us testimony today about what you saw and safety checks and whatnot, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Do you know what a replica gun is? Can you, I, I can tell you, I, do, I would not know if somebody showed me a plastic, or put a plastic gun near me or one that could fire. That's not the uh, definition of replica for this set, though. Replica, I do not know. Because I would consider that a prop gun versus something An armor the armorer would be in charge of. So you you are not, did you just say you don't know the difference between a replica gun and a real gun? If I were not to see them touch them in front of me, no, I would not. Are you aware whether a replica gun even requires safety checks? That's not what happened in this case. I'm confused by your words. Do you mean a, a plastic gun? If you mean a rubber gun, that does not need safety checks. You would not check a rubber gun. But if it is a gun that you put ammunition of any kind in, whether it's dummy or, um, it's a good answer. You she know, whatever really well. the quarter loads that they use, then those would need to be checked for safety. But a rubber gun would not. And you're saying that despite never working as an armor before, right? That is correct. I am not an armor. And you've you've never even worked in props as a props assistant, have you? I have not worked She's in like, props. No, it is I'm not my an EMT. Craft. And. Um, have you have you ever worked on a set where there was actually a part-time armor? Part-time? No. Right. Um, day players, yes, but not part-time. So who is in charge of the gun cart when the armor has to go to the, the restroom? That would... Um, it would get locked. We, I've never been in that situation. If somebody needed... Um, Done, then the armor was in the restroom, I would assume we would wait until the armorer was available to do their job. 
That would not be somebody for any other department that I am aware of. When you saw this incident with um, Sarah Zachary bringing Hannah this ammunition, um, and, and you saw Hannah, you said put it in a fanny pack, right? Correct. You don't know if those were blanks or dummies, oh, do you? That's right, mixing the rounds. And you, or were you aware that Ms. Gutierrez's fanny pack had multiple separators in it? I was not. I, I did not. I just saw her pouring them in. I did not see anything other than pouring the pouring motion and you don't follow miss gutierrez or sarah zachary all day on set do you i do not and you don't know if there are safety checks done that were out of your presence do you i i do not is it true that you have filed a lawsuit against david hall's pdq seth kinney and sarah zachary and hannah gutierrez yes it is true among others right correct and in that lawsuit, you claim that you've been traumatized by the incident, right? Absolutely. And you- um, Counsel? Counsel? Danger. Danger. I think the, um, I think it's clear that this has been a traumatic incident for her, um, counsel. This is, it, d d danger. You have, uh, you are actually seeking money damages in this that is not a or extreme emotional distress? That is correct. Did you in fact obtain a civil judgment against Sarah Zachary in that lawsuit for a sum of money? Uh, it has been entered into judgment, yes. It's probably a confidential um, settlement. Your, your case against Ms. Gutierrez, that's still pending, right? That is correct. Do you believe that your testimony here today is going to help you in your civil case against her? I'm not here for my civil case. I'm here oh. for... Helena. Case. I understand what you're here for, ma'am, but uh, do you believe that your testimony here is going to help you in that case? I'm not thinking about that case. I'm thinking about the fact that had our armorer or our first AD done their jobs. Facts. We would not be here. Facts. The woman would not be dead. Spitting mother fucking facts. would not be gone. And yes. you filed a civil lawsuit over this. Yes. yes. For your damages. Yes. To get money. Yes. It's not for money. It's not how it started. And you, ma'am, are... The defense just stepped into the best answer this witness gave. This was a better answer than this witness gave on how she feels about it. She and Ross Adiago both, they knew that when they poked on this, she was going to say, I'm not here for that. I'm here for Helena. That was a great answer. That was probably this witness's best moment. And it again reminds the jury of how appalled the people on set are at the failures that happened in this case. And ma'am, keep bringing the smoke for Dave Halls. We're uh, here for an it. An EMT basic or an EMT? What is your EMT training? EMT. There was an EMT, there's EMT advanced or advanced EMT, and there's paramedic. And you do have a certification, right? Yes, I do. More than Are your you client has. Through the state of New Mexico, I am, and oh. the state of California, as well as national registry. N She's fact, licensed, you also unlike have your client. Experience working at a hospital for almost three years. That right? is correct. And, so you're qualified. That was in an overflow unit for the emergency room. I, uh, we need to approach. So what if she worked at a hospital? She, she's qualified to be on set unless counsel's trying to get to why didn't you do more? And if she's going to ask why didn't you do more, the jury might reach down and want to smack what is her. Your... This cross-examination has made this witness so much more likable. She was likable to start, but just... What is your experience? Just, it's um, made you, you did mad. say you worked at the hospital, but what is your experience with treating gunshot wounds? Um, limited. Um, I do not have experience with with gunshot wounds. They were not on the floor I worked on. Uh, why wouldn't you be trained on um, on that type of, of injury when you're dealing on a, on a set with real guns? <laughs> I am trained for it. You asked about my experience at the hospital. Okay. Why aren't you more experienced in gunshot wounds when working on a movie set? I really am waiting. I paused because I'm waiting. I'm really waiting for this answer to be because there should never be live ammunition on a movie set. I'm ready for people to fall off a horse, step on a bee, get, you know, uh, break a wrist, jam a finger, uh, have a, a punch slip in a stunt scene. I'm, ma'am, witness, 
just full full start, just a full send. So you are this. trained with treating gunshot wounds. Correct. But you just don't have experience actually applying that training. Because I work on Not movie in a sets. Hospital setting or outside of it, correct? Because I work on movie sets and people you don't get on shot on movie you sets. Had two trauma bags. I have my normal bag, which has I. It's a ninety-six percent bag. It's kind of like a walking Walgreens, but it it has um, uh, gauze in it and trauma shears, in case something else is needed until I get my main trauma bag. Did you have any equipment with you trauma on that day big. specifically addressed? to treating a gunshot wound? No. You didn't have chest seals? No. Did so you have any IVs? I am not licensed to start IVs. Counsel, it is not this EMT's fault that Helena died. And also, the fact that Helena died is not what's what's going to save your client. You, this is not a civil lawsuit. People don't do better if somebody else's action caused the death. Your client loaded the gun. Everything that happens after that is not gonna deflect and this is not the way you want to try to do this. Chat, is this making you mad right now? Are you, how pissed are you, Chat? Because you are the jury. I mean, 14,000 of you is a big jury, but you are the jury. How pissed are you at this line of questioning? So I would not. And we are on a movie set where there should be no gunshot wounds. Well, are there other things on a movie set that could cause a thoracic puncture on the not, set? Not generally. Um, not generally. If there is going to be something that's going to happen where something more traumatic like that could happen, we call paramedics. Then we would request a standby ambulance to be on set with us so that we had all the gear and equipment needed as well as additional medics to help. But this uh, movie had knives involved in it, right? Aren't they rubber? I could not tell you. And horses? There were horses. Snakes? There were wild snakes. We did not bring them onto set. Can we approach? Yes, ma'am. That look, did you hear the witness at the end go, Ugh. she's just like, Ugh. like, how dare you? I'm glad the prosecutor finally approached, but it kind of makes this defense attorney look like a dick. So as the prosecutor, you kind of are like, you're owning yourself. Go right ahead. Keep asking her all these questions and making this jury hate this line of questioning. So um, I imagine that this is not playing well to the jury. So. Do you know who intubated Ms. Hutchins? I do not. No, this I is not assume, badgering not. a witness. This is just cross-examination. You said, um, it just feels distasteful with this you can witness. Assume. Well, I mean, were you, did you see it happen? I did not. Okay. Prior to all of these, these concerns that you're telling us about here today with Ms. Gutierrez, right. did you never raised any of those concerns with anyone? Great I question. Should have brought not this even earlier. the safety director, David Halls? I did not. Should have started this line of questioning. This is appropriate questioning. And you that said on direct. Needs to be uh, asked. I believe that prior to the the shot Her that mic you is heard so hot on that right day, now. Um, that I think I heard you say, I want to get it clear, that you did not hear Dave Halls yell out, rehearsals up, first team on set. Did you ever hear that? I did not. You never heard any call out that they were going to do that set? No, no, not on, not on the radio. I did not hear it. It uh, doesn't mean it didn't happen and I didn't hear it, but... Um, no, I just want to know what you heard. You I did not hear, hear that, no. No further questions. Good. <coughs> redirect. I, what do you need on redirect? You're going to just get... Ma'am. Or chest seals and IVs. Um, customary for movie set medics. The prosecutor is now going to double, I would probably do this too, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, I, I want her to hurry up because I have a concert tonight, but no, not gonna lie, I would do this too. Um, I would double down on the, why don't you anticipate gunshot wounds on a movie set? You don't have um, the, the, the chest, I forget what they're called, that she just called them, but you don't have these on set because you don't anticipate gunshot wounds on set. I would double the fuck down on all of those answers, right? I, I would, yeah, I would. Chest seals, yeah, I would. if you can get them. Chest seals. Uh, it, we, we're not, it's not like we can go to a hospital and pick up equipment that, or, or, or products that we would keep in our bags, whatever we 
generally keep in our bags is something that we buy over the counter. Um, there are ways to make chest seals, but they're not the most, um, they're, they, they sometimes hurt more than, than help. Um, IVs would be something that needs to be ordered, and if you do not have um, medical direction or a doctor that works at an ER that says, yes, you can work to your scope of practice or your license level, if you don't have that, which most medics in New Mexico don't have, most medics don't have that medical direction, uh, you are not allowed to, to do that on, yeah, you don't just outside of a hospital start setting. start an IV on somebody. A, if you are employed by an a EMS. Right, because you don't just start an IV okay. on somebody. Um, and shifting gears, you were asked on cross-examination some questions about um, whether or not safety checks of ammunition uh, would have taken place outside your presence. Do, do you recall that question? Yes. In your experience, are the safety checks of the ammunition done in the presence of the crew and the cast? Yes. Do you know if there's a reason for that? I'm not sure. Just go back well, to the why she's the not prepared for gunshot wounds. No. The safety was done outside no. of the presence of no, the cast no. and crew. Why is she not prepared for gunshot wounds, Carrie? Have knowledge as to the level of safety associated with that ammunition. Not if it was not done in front of them. No. Um, but the cast you, and crew are all speculating about welcome she to ask what about. to happen. Okay. Um, you were asked some questions about a civil lawsuit, and you I don't, my you, you were asked if you were testifying today because you thought it would help your civil lawsuit. I look close to um, and I think your response was, you didn't do it for Is there money, a question? that's not how it started. So I'd like you to, and then I think you got cut off. I'd like you to go ahead and finish that. The reason that I brought any kind of lawsuit to anybody in the in the in the beginnings is because I wanted change in our industry. I did not want something like this to be able to happen again. Yes. To anybody else, to their families, to the crew that knows them as family. Um, I wanted some sort of change to happen, some policy change, um, whether it be required to have a standby ambulance or it be required to have additional medics if there's going to be big stunts or big gunfire or anything that could potentially cause, you know, or somebody licensed to become armors. injured. I wanted that change in our industry because on that, on that show, there were 75, roughly 75 crew. That is minimal to compared to what I normally would have on set. I would have no less than 300 usually before I would be approved to have an additional medic to come and help me. That is just not okay. That is not okay. And being the only medic there with two patients, knowing my resources were not close enough to, to help in any significant way is what I wanted to change. And have you suffered from uh, extreme trauma uh, as a result of this? Yes. Um, I, can I just expand? Sure. Uh, sh I, okay. Look at her face looking at the defense attorney. The objection is no question pending, um, but I'm glad that Carrie circled back to um, why why did this lawsuit start? And she would have known that from her pre-interviews um, and, and knew that the defense would bring up the lawsuit. I think she should have brought up the lawsuit, but the defense trying to be like, and you experienced trauma, I mean, it's... It, <sighs> I don't think anyone's doing this criminal case to benefit their civil lawsuit. Um, I don't even see how it would benefit their civil lawsuit, whether Hannah is found criminally liable or not. The civil is not so tightly connected in this case. So it doesn't benefit her. She is furious that this could happen on a movie set and she has every right to be. Um, it just, her, her testimony hurts, just hurts my heart. You can feel um, how upset she is. All right, let's get to some other questions. Let's proceed. Or not. Um, oh, she's moving on. I forgot what the question was that was pending that I was talking uh, about, but she's moving on. Upon my question, you asked if, uh, I asked you uh, about your claim for uh, emotional distress, and, and you responded and asked if you could expand on that. The court is going to let you. Oh, okay. Please expand. Good. Thank you. 
I went home that night and I looked at my little boy. Ma'am. the same age as Helena's son. And all I could think about is how I could not save his mother's life and how he was going to grow up without a mother. And how her spouse lost the love of his life. Oh, I did not expect this testimony. I did not expect this testimony. That's why um, she sued. So you're going to, and I mean no harm to you, but we're going to strike that testimony, okay? So it, disregard you, that testimony, okay? You can't strike that right, testimony, Your Honor. I mean, okay. All right. Thanks. The judge can strike that testimony, but are any of you going to forget what you just heard? Are any of you going to forget what you just heard? Um, she. I think cross-exam opened the door for um, a lot of this. That was beyond what the judge thought was going to happen. I don't know what the prosecutor represented to the judge, but the defense is like, you're bringing this case for money. You, you say you have emotional distress. And I don't know what the judge was expecting when the witness is asked to expand on the fact that she's suing for emotional distress. She's going to tell you why she has emotional distress. I don't know what the judge thought was gonna happen. Maybe the judge thought she was gonna talk about the trauma on set, but she is talking about the trauma on set. The trauma on set is that she feels like she failed Helena and that's not her fault and how much that has wreaked havoc on her. So the court's like, we're gonna strike that testimony. Um, you can't, the shit's out of the horse on this one. It can't be undone. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate right. your time. All right, thank you because that's the emotional distress she suffered. Are they approaching? Oh, now they're letting her step down. And the attorneys are approaching. Um, it's like defendants also allowed to have coffee in court. Yeah, when we talk about not being able to unring the bell in court, I think that's maybe one of the best examples we've ever seen of it because the jury's never- Mr. Bull, hold on, sir. Is that a question from the jury to the judge? There's a question. Good thing we get to zoom zoom. The emotional um, expense, the la her narrative, where she said, can I expand on that? And then she continued on and on and on. That's what you're going to strike, okay? You're going to disregard that as evidence. Yeah, Your Honor. The rest of it weren't clear direct, at all. Her cross-examination and then her redirect, except when she said, can I expand on that? And then went into... Um, her yeah, emotional her trauma. Trauma, okay? You, any, any questions on that? Okay, thank you. What did you think was going to happen? I imagine... I imagine that the jury just said, what part of her testimony are we supposed to strike or disregard? And that's why she was like, the emotional stuff. You know, this judge did such a great job at motions and I was so optimistic and I am so frustrated, but the judge was not clear. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard that last bit of testimony. She wasn't super clear. The jury's confused and it's all emotional. And I imagine some of the jurors are emotional because of it. And the court made their decision based on that, which they shouldn't have. If the court allowed the question and there was an objection and the court allowed the question and then said, I wasn't expecting that answer. Your Honor, you don't get to choose to strike things based on I didn't expect that answer. You're supposed to just rule on the object. On the objections. Are you ready for the next witness, Your Yes, I am. State calls Mamie Mitchell. Mamie Mitchell's the script supervisor. She also has a civil Council lawsuit. I don't know why counsel are approaching. Mamie Mitchell is the script supervisor from the movie Rust. And it's not been sworn in yet. All right, let's see if we can do it this way. I don't know what they're approaching about. Maybe cumulative evidence. All right, there we go. I think Mamie Mitchell is the one yeah, that's Louis represented Stevens by Gloria Allred. Mamie Elizabeth Mitchell. And Ms. Mitchell, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm a substitute teacher. How long have you been a substitute teacher? Uh, I think around two and a half weeks. 
<laughs> so prior to being a substitute teacher, what did you do for a living? I was a Hollywood script supervisor. She left. And every, can you explain oh, to the jury what a script supervisor does? Almost everyone on this set left. Sometimes I pre-time the script. So many quit. So many left the movie industry I, because I of read, this. I read the script, and in my mind, I give a producer and director an idea of how long their movie is. And based on that, that's an incredible cut some superpower. Scenes or add some scenes, build some sets, or not build the sets. So it's a budgetary thing. Um, while we're shooting a film, I provide the actors with lines if they need them. Um, I keep the continuity in all areas. And, and when you say you keep the continuity, can you explain to us what that means? It means that your right okay, I'm hand going to 1 is on your right hip, and you're leaning on your left hand. And I'm going to make sure you do that every time we shoot. I, I know what that, that means that because of the Office Lady podcast. Dialogue. So it's maintaining the continuity, which gives, which brings me to that. The thing that I really do is to ensure that a film cuts together seamlessly in the editing room, which gives the, uh, the director uh, choices. Um, as a part of being a script supervisor, uh, do you keep very close track of all of the filming that's done on the set and the scenes that have been filmed? Yes, I log every shot, lens, how long the shot is, if it's incomplete, if it's good, if it's not good, if it's fair, if it's the best one, and if there's an airplane on line six, but then the airplane, it's okay in line nine, sound, everything that has to do with the photography, I have in here, and that's translated to the editing room. I didn't know okay. everything a script supervisor long, did, so I find this fascinating. Uh, were you a script supervisor before you decided to become a substitute teacher? Uh, about 42 years. 42 and years. And in those years that you uh, have worked in the film industry, um, how many movies and uh, TV shows do you think you've worked on? 74. I know that they talk about the script supervisors, of those supervisors 74 in the shows, Office Ladies show. I just didn't If you can guesstimate for us how many of those um, the work. had live guns and an armorer. I think I've worked with an armorer about 24 times on 24 films. Sometimes, okay. yeah, go ahead. Sometimes maybe a gun is used one time, and if the armor was brought in for that, I'm not really aware of that. Uh, oh. But when guns are really a part of a, of a of a script, about 24 times. Okay. Um, safe to say you have a lot of experience with uh, armors on movie sets. I do. Um, as the script supervisor. Are you present for every single take that is filmed for every single scene? Unless it's a second unit, and I have a second unit script supervisor, but for every first unit shot, I am on, I'm there for every take. On the set of Rust, uh, were you there for every take? Yes. Okay. First unit would be Baldwin at so, all we've heard. I am going to ask you if you noticed any differences between Ms. Gutierrez and the other armorers that you worked with on the previous 24 occasions? I imagine that's a yes. I imagine that's a yes. <laughs> um, and it's always weird, I imagine, sitting there in the jury box waiting for the lawyers to do whatever they're doing. I think the defense is finally going to cut this off or try to cut off how often the prosecution uses these witnesses' experiences on film sets. Um, to explain differences. How did Ms. Gutierrez compare to the other previous and the court's 24 allowing armors it. that you worked with? I found her to be inexperienced. Tell us the truth, ma'am. And did not present in the, in the way that I'm used to seeing professional armors, union armors, uh, on a film set. It was different. Um, <laughs> did you find her behavior on the film set to be professional? I did not. Um, did She's going to have some strong words. Did you ever take notice of where yeah, guess firearms all the tea. Uh, were stored? Did you hear a fight between Hannah and Sarah Zachary? Can you tell us what the rest of the fight was about? I saw them on her cart. And when you saw them on her cart, was she present? Not all the time. And was that unusual? Everything about the cart was unusual. When you say everything about the cart was unusual, can you explain. explain to the jury what you mean? In my experience, 
what I have experienced on film sets is that the armors are very quiet, uh, focused, and very organized. Everything is very organized. And they're very focused. I don't know if I said that, but they're very focused and sort of methodical about okay. everything. Their movements are very methodical. I'm going to take you back to your concerns about the cart specifically. I'm missing um, a, can you explain I'm missing uh, what wire. your concerns were right with back. the state of the prop cart? Well, I just never seen anything like it. It, it just reminded me, I mean, it, not that it reminded me, but the best way I can describe it is it was like that drawer in your kitchen where you just put stuff that doesn't really go anywhere else, the random things, and you're going to look for something. and just It was messy. Oh my gosh, she just called it a junk it drawer. Than what I was used to. She's like, this cart was a junk did drawer. Did it seem organized? Accurate. No, it did not seem organized. Um, at, at any point in time, were you aware that there were what I'm going to refer to as accidental discharges that took place on set? I was on the set at the cabin. But hang on, you're, you're a step ahead of me. Um, were you aware of the accidental discharges? Yes. Okay. Um, were you present for the accidental discharges? Yes. Okay, can you go ahead and explain to us what, what happened with regard to those accidental discharges? Well, I believe the first one, I was walking... Shall I describe the set? I was... I was uh, from here to where those people are back there, away, walking back. We had camped out over here for a wide shot, and so we kind of moved back, and as I was walking back, there, there was this, a gun, a gunshot went off. There was a gunshot, and it was frightening. Um, and do you know, um, do you know the circumstances of that accidental discharge? Well, it was one of them that I know about now. No, no, that's okay. Um, in <laughs> no, terms what do of, you know from uh, what you saw? In terms of- And what you did. Sorry, now we've got to move the- When you chair. heard the gunshot go off, uh, why was it frightening? It's a Western. You know, we've heard that there's lots of guns and blanks and... Because it doesn't happen. But what doesn't happen? Guns do not just go off on a film set. Um, in your career... The prosecutor's you... point that this witness is not picking up because the witness is ready to talk about something else. The prosecutor's point is trying to be, if there was going to be a gunshot, wouldn't you know that it was happening? Because it would be in the day sheet and what have you. So she's trying to get to that, but this witness is jumping ahead to, um, this never should have happened on set and I have all the rage for Hannah. So that's that's where we're, that's where we're at. Recall having that ever happen to you? I do not. This witness is angry and like Ross when, was, and it's justified, can, can I get it. Can you give it. the jury a little bit of, of um, background on, Given that guns go off on movie sets because there's blank ammunition in the gun and guns are being shot, um, why would it why would it have startled you? What what's the procedure usually for gunshots? Fire in the hall. Someone yells fire in the hall. Um, and it, what who does, yells what does fire that in the hall? Someone yells that to tell us what you're doing. Can you, ma'am? Fingers in your ears, mouth open. You have to keep the mouth open. Ma'am, you need to just open? explain. It helps your eardrums. Something about that. We just, that's what we did. We're taught, that's, I've known that forever. You keep your mouth open and you go like this. Okay. Um, so. You protect your hearing. With regard to the accidental discharges, um, did anyone call fire in the hole? No. Um, and how many accidental discharges? I wish this prosecutor occurred? would have just said, and that day that you heard the gunshot go out, had well, anyone done these things? That. Two. Because it gets confusing. And do you recall if they were the same day? They were the same day, same set. Did they cause you to uh, feel concerned? Leading. I was concerned and I was confused. What do you mean confused? Sorry, Chad, I'm going to eat while Shortly we're doing after this. Shortly I was hired I didn't by have Roy Waters lunch. to do this movie. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I understand and I'm going to stop you. Okay. Um, so let me... Uh, well, something is there. I want to know what's there. And, and let's... Uh, let me... Let me take you to, I'm sorry, let me back up. Okay. Um, Ma'am, you indicated that you are on the set of rest. You were present for the- Now I'm confused. Uh, 
filming of every yeah i want all the tea too she was going to get into seen, a, is that right a different area yes um and, and then, i am Wait a minute, let's get we've got kind of off track with uh, this direct examination a little bit, and I don't know how. I'm going to answer some questions. I would like this council to go smoother so I can snack. Marked as State's Exhibit 164, I'm going to ask to have it entered into evidence, admitted into evidence, and permission to publish. Kimmy, interesting. Uh, Kimmy said EMT and Ross are married, I believe. They spoke about their children in their first um, uh, PD present, joint every interview. Time rolling camera. Is that right? I didn't know that. With the exception of sometimes, uh, a, just a couple of times. Uh, hey, let, 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 let me ask you this. Um, do you recall uh, meeting with me and me showing you a video that I wanted you to talk about? That was from October 17th. Do you recall that? No. This witness is okay. not picking oh, up what the DA is putting down you at your, all. Could you refresh my memory, please? <laughs> uh, I, I will refresh your memory. Um, we're going to have to unplug because I'm going to have to refresh. I'm sorry. That's OK. It's all right. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Do you, do you recall? You know what I'm talking about. Where's now? the defense okay. objection okay. on any of this? Um, okay. <laughs> oh, he's on his phone. Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, Hi, Mr. Bowles. Since I'm pretty, you you're just watching on YouTube. We're here. For the filming of that take. No, Chad. I don't yes, think I he's on his phone I'm going for to us. Pull up State's Exhibit 164 and publish. <laughs> Why is Hannah not speaking to one of her lawyers? We don't know. He tried to quit. They're not talking. We don't know. <laughs> he is on this Ma'am, do you recall the date that this the particular DA is confusing take me too. was filmed? Um, confusing I'm sorry. It, hey, hang on just a second. That's in order for you to, to in order for you to refer to your notes, we need you oh, she to, to, busted to open have her, a discussion with us. Okay. She so, busted open her notebook. As you sit here today, do you recall the date that this was filmed? I don't know. I don't recall the date, but it's in my script. Okay. Would it refresh your memory if you looked at your notes? Yes. Okay, so what I want you to do, listen to me carefully, yeah. I want you to look at your notes, and then I just want you to keep that information to yourself. Okay. They, get, they get to approach you and see what you're looking at. You can't oh, read sure. it out loud. Okay. Um, I'm going to have this. When you look in your notes, just take note of the date, and then wait for a follow-up question, okay? Okay. Do you, does counsel wish to approach to see what she's looking at? I don't need to see her notes. Do you, do you want to see her notes? This witness is ready sure. to run. Yeah. Okay. Shall I open it up? All right, I'm going to... Right. Ooh, what happened? I, I don't know what happened. Um, I'm going to fast forward while she's looking through her script. You can find that. I, I apologize. Yeah, I don't want to get into why this is confusing, but... She wants to be thorough. I told you to wait for... It's October... Oh. Should be October uh, 20th. Yeah. It's October 20th. No. Nope. Okay. No? Stop for a second. We, I told you wait for a follow-up question. She's not listening to speak, you. Okay? okay. Wait, wait, wait with us. Okay. She's just still flipping through her notes. C Carrie, what are you trying yes, to? I found it. Get out with this witness. Are you sure? I'm sure. I think that's her memory refreshed. Okay. Has your memory been refreshed as to the date? Yes. And I thought I could have a snack. The judge is now jumping in and reminding the prosecutor to ask the right questions. I hate this so much. Listen really closely. I'm going to put this down to normal speed. They're trying to refresh this witness's recollection. And in trying to refresh this witness's recollection, she's reviewing her notes. But then counsel never says, has your recollection <clears throat> been refreshed? And the court jumps in and reminds the prosecutor. Found it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, has your memory been refreshed as to the date? Yes. And let me just ask you. Do you hate it? Do you hate it the way I hate it? Like the judge fed the prosecutor her next question. This is wild. And you can close, you, you, take note of the date, okay? And this witness is not picking up what the prosecutor is putting down. It's like she's not prepped at all. That, that helps you refer to your notes. You, 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 no, go ahead and answer my question. Yes. What's on the screen that helps you refer that, that helps you find that in your notes? 125 Charlie, the scene number. Okay, so the 125 C is the scene number. Is that what you said? On That's the marker. The slate number. The scene is 125. This is the slate number. Okay.
Okay. Which one's slate and which um, one's and, seen? And, we don't know. So are you able to compare your notes to the information on that slate? Yes. She's trying to refresh her recollection to what day? Of this take. I was. The script supervisor has the script to know which day the accidental discharges happened. We haven't had a lot of testimony about what day. It seems that this witness is saying 1017 to try to remind herself that it happened on October 17th. The fatal shooting happened on October 21st. So the prosecutor, I think, is going to try to show that between the 17th and the 21st, Hannah didn't change and start acting more carefully. And what was the date that this was filmed on? October 17th. <laughs> All right. 2021. The jury just all started <laughs> laughing. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. It took and us a very it. long time to Thank get you. there, and she can't publish this video until she has that information. Yeah. Hey, Mark. We got to do the footprints again. Here Hold we on. Go. So we're here. These camera left. No, that's it. I'm sorry. No, um, it's my understanding that part of your job is continuity. Is that right? Correct. So I'm going to ask you, can you identify this prop that we're looking at right here uh, on, on Mr. Baldwin? Yes. What is that prop? It's his over-the-shoulder holster and bandolier. Okay. His holster or bandolier, you said? Mm -hmm. a and what what are these things that, that are right here? Bullets. Um, and are, are, it, is that the way that the bandolier was loaded on October 17th? Correct. Thank you, ma'am. Um, all right, let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Chat over the um, shoulder got me too. Ms. Mitchell, I'm going to take you Same. to the I'm date of October 21st, uh, 2021. Uh, were you working on set that day? Yes. Continuity on um, Baldwin's understand that bandolier that had a live in round morning, in it. That's what we're I'm here for. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, do you recall taking a lunch break that day? I did. Um, and, well, let me back up. We've, we've heard a lot of testimony that the camera crew walked off that day. She'd be less confused yes. if we stopped and, backing and, up. Um, did you have a discussion with Mr. Souza and Ms. Hutchins about making the day? I did. Okay, without saying what they said, uh, can you just... Tell us, tell us what you said to them in terms of that conversation. I said, I, I turned to Helena and, and I said, I shoot with one camera all my career until shooting with two cameras became the thing. I said, if, and Joel, and then Joel, and then I looked at Joel and I said, if we're organized and you have a plan, we can make the day with one camera. And Helena said, I shoot with the one camera too all the time. Okay, but provided only for only for context. Um, the statement was about Helena's so statement provided for context. We understand that there was some filming, and then you went to lunch. I, I want you to start after lunch. Uh, where, where? What's our understanding that that uh, that there's a something going on in the church preparing for a scene? If you can describe that to us, please. Do you recall, let me, let me ask you this, when, uh, when you went into the church after lunch, were other people already there? Oh, yeah. I'm so okay. confused as to what just um, happened. And after lunch. After lunch, we're only gonna talk about after lunch. Was, yes. Uh, so she when you she were had, in the church no, after lunch, froze. Um, who do you recall being unless, in unless the church? Unless the feed glitched. Doran, Curtin. And, and, and Ms. Curtin, what, what was her role on set? Wardrobe. Okay, okay. Keep going, please. Her answers are... She had blood. She was going to refresh blood. Um, fake, fake blood, I assume. Fake blood. Okay. I switched places with her. 
because she's real tall. And I said, could I stand in front of you? And we laughed, and I went in front of her. Helena uh, Serge, my director, Ross, Zach, uh, Alec Baldwin in the pew with the gun, Karen Kuhn. Who, who's Karen Kuhn? She's a still photographer. Thank you. And she was on this side. Okay, thank you. Uh, coming into the church. I'm putting them on 1.25. I think there was a special effects guy there. It's so much better. Maybe a supervisor. Okay. Do, let me ask you this. When you came into the church, did Mr. Baldwin already have his gun? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So you didn't see how he got the gun or who handed him the gun? I did not. Okay. So you come into the church. Uh, Dave Hall was there also. Okay. Mr. Hall was there. Sorry. I um, wonder if she heard or saw who handed the gun. How long before the gun. the gun goes off are you in the church? Not very long at all. If any witness testimony I'm going to respond to with regard to who handed off the gun, the script supervisor in charge of continuity is the witness I want to hear from on this if she saw it because she's going to be paying attention to everything and seems to have a very good eye for detail and remembering things because that is her whole job. Okay, so when you come into the church, um, uh, you've indicated these people were there. What, what was happening in the moments before the gun went off? I switched place with Doran. Um, uh, uh, Helena was here, and she's doing her thing with the light, you know, looking at him. She's doing her lighting. And, and people are not static on a film set. So she's, it's a dance. And she's doing this and looking at the, there was an onboard monitor. And Joel is looking, and they're there, and she's doing her thing and looking at him, and and that, and uh, this is so much know. more engaging sped up. What everybody else was doing, but that's what they were doing. Okay, I, I saw the camera. I knew I had an idea of what shot it was. One of three. I wasn't hadn't seen the lens yet, so I wasn't sure what it was yet, and uh, and that's what they were doing. Uh, and then what happened? And then I took my phone out. It's okay. Don't, I took don't, my phone yeah. out. Oh, he, uh, the actor. I went back to normal speed. On his own. Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, he was practicing. And as I was doing, he was practicing. And then um, when I looked down to my phone uh, to get his, I looked, got the picture. I was going to check his wardrobe, make sure everything matched. And, and let me stop you. As For a continuity. part of your continuity job, do you frequently take photos and, and videos on your phone? I frequently take photos. Okay. Sometimes it flips. Uh, it, I take photos. Okay. <laughs> um, when you said sometimes it flips, is it, uh, on occasion, uh, do you end up with a live photo or a short video? Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you're you're. Oh, is that coming into using evidence? Using your phone for continuity, take constantly. Okay. Wouldn't you have extracted uh, what that? What happens then? Are we getting the picture? So, I was. I got my picture, and I was going to check his wardrobe and right we're not doing that explosion um and when that happens what do you do i uh well i my it, my body had a black it was a uh shock and then I heard mo so uh, she felt guttural she moaning. She felt the impact. And I looked around, and my director was crab crawling backwards. And then I turned around to look at Alec. And when I did, she was falling in my direction, and I ran. And when you say she was falling, you mean Elena Hutchins? Hutchins was falling, it, and I ran. It, and she you, is the one who you was run? helping Helena to sit to get help. Oh, I thought she and was so, the one who caught her from danger. Sit. Okay, uh, where did you go? I was completely I ran wrong. Down the, out the door. She ran down the, the fuck steps, out to the left, towards the one of the set. I, I, you know, I, it was a set deck truck, one of the trucks, and pull and and uh, I have and uh, with my phone, and I start dialing nine one one. And uh, are you the person that that called nine one one in this case? I am. And when you spoke to nine one one, how did you describe? 
uh, the incident that you were calling them for? Um, Ms. Mitchell. I believe I said. Just uh, give her a second. I believe I said we've had two people shot accidentally on a film set. We need help immediately. And why did you use the word accidentally? I did not want her to think there was an active shooter or a mass shooting. I needed and gather an army together. I needed. I, I wanted to come right away. Okay. Help right away. And and you thought that. that I mean, I understand where she's coming from on that. They're if not going to play the call, I don't think. Or, or medics. They haven't thought laid that foundation it was an for the call. Shooter, it may take them more time. Is that what you mean? That's, That's what correct. She's saying. Okay. Um, she didn't want them to roll out the SWAT team. She wanted to get police on scene immediately. Ma'am, have you also filed a civil lawsuit against the production company and other folks in this? I'm not going to be able to do this. Wait. Nope. Hold on. Nope. Three witnesses with civil lawsuits in. The prosecutor is finally asking about the civil lawsuit before it gets to cross-examination. So, so glad to hear it. I'm sorry I've got my travel soundboard. I don't I don't know where things are. But it's uh it's it's time we did that. I'm case I have love to see it. Are you testifying today because you think it's gonna help your civil lawsuit? No, it's not gonna help my civil lawsuit at all. Um, are you testifying truthfully today? I am. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. See how easy that is? See how easy that is? It doesn't make it look like it's shady. Doesn't make, it's just like, it is what it is. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Well, good afternoon. If Mr. Bowles opens up any space, this witness is going to yell. You can tell how pissed she is. Um, so if he opens any door, like with the EMT witness, this witness is gonna like plow right the fuck through it to tell you Hi. how she feels. Hi. I just have a few questions for you, not too much. Um, yeah, first don't of all, open a door. I want to go back to your movies with the other armors. You said there was about 24 of them, give or take. Okay. Um, on those, did you ever have a situation where there was a part-time armor, <clears throat> to your knowledge, somebody that did part-time armory and part-time something else? I think there might have been one or two. Were those day, day people, or was that part time? What's that term you used earlier? Day, day player. And they just come in for a day and then they're gone. All right, day is there a question player. pending? Was, were those day players, or was that a part time armor? Do you mean was it a prop master who also does armory? Yes, or yes, even a day player that did both. I don't remember. Okay. It's a day player. Okay. Um, now, She's like, I don't hire regard people. to not seeing my, not my job. Um, the cart you mentioned, do you know whether when you saw the cart sometimes whether those firearms on there were real or whether they were replica firearms? Not to my knowledge. I think everything was a, a real firearm. Okay. Are you not aware whether there were any replica firearms? Any asked and answered. Fake Type firearms on Rust? No. Okay. Now, also, you were aware that the armor would be called to scenes sometimes, right? That she'd have to be on a scene uh, when they were filming? I don't what, know what you mean by on. He, it's like if they don't start answering immediately, he asks three or four questions until they start talking. Ask a question, one, stop. I kind of want to slow this down into real time, but I also think it'll make me want to like claw my eyes out. So. Okay, in or around it, when, when firearms it's, were being used, she had to be in or around that scene? All armors have to be present when a firearm is being used. Okay, and that wasn't my question. My what question was it? Was, did you know on this movie set? This is going to get spicy because she's annoyed. Sometimes had to be in or near the scene when firearms were being used. Yes. Okay. So on those times, it would be impossible for the armorer to be at her cart too, right? Well, I've never heard of that before. Um, well, 
Kind of hard to be in two places at one time, isn't it? That's kind of the point. Oh, fuck. This is going to get real awkward. All right. Oh, we are on normal speed. Okay, good. Um, she doesn't want to answer that because it's a it's a good point from the defense. The defense... The defense's point is, if the armorer is on set with an actor, they can't be at the cart. And she's like, I've never heard of that. And now, now they are going to fight with each other um, because she doesn't want the defense to have a gotcha moment. She's also got a civil lawsuit pending and she's not pleased with him. So that's why she's not answering him. And he's just continuing to make comments, which is not proper. You ask a question and you stop. He's now just commenting. I get to do the comment. I've never heard of that before. Well, kind of hard to be in two places at one time, isn't it? That's kind of the point. Um, now, did you know whether this cart, this cart was shared with props? Just, just and stare him down. I think it was. So, when She's you, know, just gonna you keep saw staring the him down. You, you described it, your kitchen drawer where you put everything. Do you know if the props people were coming and putting their stuff on it too? I think they were. Okay. And so do you know who might have caused the, you know, things to be in different places? Was it props or you don't know who was doing that? Do you? I do. Who? They were all doing it. Okay. So who's they did all? Did you see them? Yes. You saw Sarah Zachary putting stuff on it? Yeah. Three women at a cart. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Now, with regard to the, um, what, what is happening? The discharge that you said you heard, you remember that? Which one? Well, you described when you were walking. I think you said you heard a sound, a shot. They're, they're just gonna fight. Which is time? Is that right? A misfire. Yes. Okay. Two of them. Okay. Did you find out about that well after? Or did you actually, were you actually there? I was there. It almost blew my ears out. Okay. Now, do you know whether any of that was special effects? It was not special effects. Cross is going to get spicier. Did you report that to anybody? This everyone, is... everyone, I didn't have to report it. Everybody knew it. Everybody heard it. Everybody in production? I, I don't know about production. There's a everyone misfire. Everyone set heard it. Everyone knew. Do you know if Dave Halls heard it? Dave Halls was there. She's so pissed. So he would have known, so you wouldn't have had to tell him. It calls right? for speculation. It calls for speculation. How are we not objecting? Everyone who was at that set, on that set, and there were a lot of people, heard the gun go off accidentally. Both two, twice. The misfires. Okay, uh, different topic. In the script, do you remember whether it required a draw in the scene on October 21st, 2021, after lunch? Did that scene require a draw from the holster? For the actor, for Mr. Baldwin, to draw from his holster? It did. Okay. Do you remember if that required him to point the, the weapon? That's not the shot that we discussed before lunch. Okay. But that's, he was asking so about was the script, that so that's non-responsive. He's asking about the script. He's yeah. trying to get to Baldwin was going off script, but it doesn't really help yeah, his client's case. Great. It doesn't help his client's case. I, I don't know the additional okay. questions. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank excused. You Thank you. Mm -hmm. Look at that. No redirect. Let's get to the next witness. Mamie was having none of the defense attorney at all. Uh, let's see what the attorneys approached. They've been approaching a lot. Let's see if we can catch up to real time while they um, they are up at the bar. At the bar, what is she about to say to the jury? Not a break. Unless you're breaking for the day, because I can go Vegas. Like if you're breaking for the day, I can Vegas. I, Your Honor, I volunteer to Vegas. So, you no, know, just break for. All right, we're going to break for the week. So, you know, just because we did a whole week. All right, I don't want to confuse anybody. We're going to break for the for the day. 
Okay. We're done. Right. So we're done. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in we're court. Done. Do not do any research. Do not Google um, about the case or the trial. You know the the rust production, anything, okay? The evidence is what you receive in court. Very, very important, okay? Thanks, Your Honor. Have a good and safe weekend. Have a great Thanks weekend. Have, have a you, great Your weekend, Honor. Your Honor. It is 2 p.m. in the West, <laughs> and court is done for the- uh, One of the jurors wants to be reassured that we're not going past the eighth. I can't give that re reassurance, okay? Uh, can, can we approach on yeah, that, though? Yeah, sure. It might be helpful. <clears throat> One of the jurors wants the reassurance that we are not going to go past March 8th. This is a reassurance I also need. Um, so they want to approach because they think they can help on that. I keep trying to zoom, zoom, and I keep fucking it up. I would also like reassurance on the dates, Your Honor. I, I really would. Okay. You don't have to. Is that correct? Okay. You don't have to. Nobody has to nod their head on which one of you wants to know. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so not past, whether, whether it's gonna go past the eighth, they think that they will finish their case um, the day before that. that. And that would be finishing both cases. Yes. The, it's gonna to go to the jury on the Assuming seventh. Assuming everything goes at the right clip, but then, but think, so. Judge, just a, a point of, of clarification. Fuck. What we discussed is that we expect, hopefully, to be doing closing arguments the morning of the seventh. Okay, okay, but the morning that of the seventh mean your de deliberations are not going to go past the eighth. All right, because once it's handed to you, it's however long you all deliberate. Okay, so I would say, in an abundance of caution, that the eighth it will go past the eighth as far as deliberations go. That's in an abundance of caution. Okay. No, Just let's get this verdict back the afternoon of the seventh. After they get the evidence. No. And then that works know, for my schedule, Your Honor. I have shit I want to do on the eighth. Am I making myself clear? Okay. Th right. This is good for okay. me. Thank you. This is We're real good recess. for me. All right. I might. Th if they do closing arguments the morning of March seventh, they are going to come back with a verdict the afternoon of March seventh. And that means I'll be clear on the 8th. And that means I'll be clear when we leave for spring break. And that means I don't have to leave you for another day of trial, except maybe on Monday when I'm traveling. But that means that we are going to close this case out by the 8th. Fuck, I'm excited. You guys, this is good work ever. Good work, everybody. We did. We did it. Good. Good work, people. Good. 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 Solid work today. Um, we've done enough for this day, and EDB is in Las Vegas to go to a concert tonight. So, I am going to get. I am going to speed run a summary, and then a few questions, and then I am going to speed run getting myself downstairs to join my friends for an espresso martini. So that is what I am going to do. But I am. I am so excited because sometimes. Sometimes it all works out. So I had, we're going to do a quick story time and then I'm going to do a summary. I swear. Um. So quick story. I had a supervisor at the district attorney's office who I very, very much liked. And I would go into her office with like my hair and my ass completely on fire and be like, but, but this and 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 that like, and she'd be like, Miss Baker, it will all work out. It will all work out. It will all work out. And I would be like, it will all work out. And every single time, it was not always fun, but every single time it all worked out. It all worked out, and that's what's gonna happen with this trial. Chat, it's gonna all work out. It, it's, everything is awesome. I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. All right, um, I'm gonna get to a few questions. No, summary, I meant to do a summary. Fuck, what are we doing? Summary. It is the afternoon of day seven of the Rust trial, 
and they have broken early from court due to EDB, the internet's number one legal commentator, being in Las Vegas to see Dave Matthews. So it is time for EDB to go. So court broke early to accommodate that schedule, and I'm really appreciated. Um, no, I'm just kidding. They were, it seems, maybe waiting on a longer witness. This is my speculation, and that longer witness is probably Seth Kinney, which should be the state's last witness. The prosecution and defense and judge assured the jury that they should be getting to closing arguments the morning of March 7th, which means to me on Monday, the first half of the day is gonna be the end of the prosecution's case, and then the prosecution will rest their case, and then we will get into the defense case for a few days. So what we learned this afternoon, we heard from the onset medic who is an EMT. It was testimony that she saw Hannah Gutierrez and Sarah Zachary dumping ammo into the fanny pack and it didn't seem organized or separated. She also talked about hearing the gunshot go off, treating um, both Joel Souza and Helena Hutchins on set, and then the defense stepped in it on cross-examination and started uh, really slamming her about her civil lawsuit and having emotional distress in her civil lawsuit. And the prosecution got to redirect it and said, can you expand, explain a little the emotional distress you say you're in because of the civil suit? And she started talking about how her kid and Helena Hutchins' kid are the same age and that she knows that she couldn't save Helena because of what everyone else did on set. And it was very emotional, very strong testimony. And then the judge is like, no, that's not what I thought she was going to say. Strike that from the record. And there is no way that the jury's going to forget the distress that that, wit that witness was under and the human cost of this case is what we heard after lunch, both from script supervisor Mamie Mitchell and from the on-site EMT. And that's where we left the day. Let's get to questions. Um, Let's see. EDB, how many Dave Matthews concert have you been to? You deserve some kind of super fan award. Oh, I don't get a super fan award. Um, I am definitely in the um in the in the fandom spectrum for dave let me see i'm gonna go to my personal statistics real quick in the fandom spectrum of dave i am not at the top of the fandom i have been to 61 shows but uh, tonight will be 62 i suppose but um that is not even in the realm there are dave fans i know that have been to hundreds and hundreds of shows. But for the casual concert goer, I realize that this is obsessive. Um, it's just what I love. Tinsley's opinion says the part that confuses me is that if everyone noticed that she was not doing what she should, nobody said anything. Um, the distracting from fault is bothersome. Tinsley, I agree with you. A few raised red flags, but many didn't raise red flags. And I wonder if, like the script supervisor assumed somebody else was doing it. Um, the EMT never raised red flags. And I think that's one of the strong areas of cross-examination um, for it. For those asking if I'm doing a meet and greet, no, I'm in town really briefly with friends. So I did not have time to set up time to meet and greet and stream trial. So if trial hadn't been streaming, I would have done one earlier today, but trial. Wedge said, maybe it's just me, but tampering with evidence charge seems extremely odd to me because wouldn't that mean she needed to have access to the evidence after it became evidence? I'm confused. I'm also confused. And as to Hannah's tampering with evidence charge, I haven't seen any evidence of it. And I would be, well, with this judge, maybe not. This judge has been very, very um, gracious to the prosecution, but I don't think we have any evidence of, of evidence tampering. I just don't think there's any evidence on the record. Rhonda Berry said, I had lung surgery, both hands operated on, been homeless and got a new home. Congratulations. The best part, I found you. I hope that's not the best part. You got a home, but I'm happy to entertain you on the internet. Um, thank you for all you give. Rhonda, you are welcome. And this community is, I think, the best thing that I do. So um, for those of you in the chat asking, who is Dave Matthews? I I have to log off. No, no I'm kidding. Um, the chat will let you know. Um, my favorite witness so far, she's informative. Well, also showing emotions. Let's hope defense is nice. That's regarding the EMT. And um, no, no, that did not, that did not happen. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to get to just a few questions because I absolutely want to get to questions. I see a ton of great um, and helpful comments, but I don't think we have any questions. Um, Daphne, thank you so much for the super chat. I would be a terrible judge. The thing that's a, that I think feed into me being a streamer is one I can't keep some of the thoughts to myself and um, I make a lot of faces and those are things that would make me a terrible terrible judge 
habitual contents at EDB, they're not supposed to, but do you think jurors research and talk about the case when they go home at night? I don't think they do. Most, um, most jurors that I have had experience with and people I know who have done jury duty take it very, very seriously. Does that mean everyone will? No, but most people take it seriously and after doing this shit all day, want to just go back to their life and pretend it's not existing. G&T, probably not for me tonight, but um, something, something. Amy Zimmerman said, shout out to my husband, Rob. It's his birthday this weekend. Have fun tonight, Emily. I will um, absolutely have fun. I'm going to go do old nerdy 90s girl things. Uh, Tori Amethyst, last question is, do you think the witness with the witnesses so far that Hannah will have to get on the stand when the defense presents their side? There was screaming in the hallway. Um, I don't. I don't know how they're going to decide that. I mean, there's been a lot of allegations that she was never checking the rounds. And if she gets on the stand, she might say that. But um, th there's a lot of that information. But I want to see the defense witnesses first. Hannah might want to get on, on the stand. She might actively want to get on the stand. And that will be very interesting to see. So with that, you guys, we have an early Friday. We are going to wrap. Um, if you want to stay on top of my my trial coverage and the cases that I'm covering and all of the Bravo Spear lawsuits that I'm going to cover next week. Um, LawnardApp.com. The Lawnard app is free on iOS and Android. It is, it is made by me and my team for you so that you can know when we're streaming and when the key witnesses come on stand. And we will take care of you with that. Lawnards have a safe an amazing weekend. Um, if you follow me around the Instagrams, you will see some of what I'm doing tonight. I promise to try not to sing so loud in the background that you can't actually see the concert video, and I will see you later. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a law nerd.